Hello everybody, this is Jonathan Guzman from Guzman1611, and I have William Edward Hackman with me. Alright, so we're going to be talking about creation and evolution. What is the what are the problems with it and why uh evolution is false and why creation is true. So William And also Oh yeah, and I have to show you something. And and also me I mean stop teaching the flat earth and teach a spherical earth as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't I, I do have a small globe, but Yeah, so, the Bible teaches creation, but not only that, it teaches a spherical earth. Yeah. Not a flat earth. Mm hmm Okay? Yeah. And it has nothing to do with believing in evolution. I don't, I don't know very much about how old the earth is, but I think the earth is about, maybe about 6,300 years old. That's what I heard, yeah. You can even count the number. If you count, if you count, if you do the math, mm -hmm. on, ge on the geologies of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, there's a, this pastor called Ty Pastor Tyler Doka of Great Harvest Baptist Church, and he says that you have to believe in the Big Bang in order to believe in a spherical Earth. Correct? Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, well, yeah, well, I never watched Tyre Doka's, um, videos, YouTube channel at all. I never watched him, no. But if he's teaching the flat earth, he's probably a false, is he a false prophet? I think so. I mean, if you're talking about a flat earth, then where's hell? Well, Where? that's... Exactly. To me... Well, to him, maybe the, to me, well, to him, maybe the North Pole. <laughs> but to this Earth, in the core of the Earth, I have a small one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we I'm see it. I'm not sure you can see her. Yeah, we see it. Yeah. I can see it, yeah. So, where I'm going, I'm going to kind of set, set the stage of the evolution uh, discussion. So, what do you, what do you know about evolution, and why do you why do you why would you go with creation over evolution? Well, well, you see, well, evolution just teaches that the Earth is billions of years old, and also people are adding billions of years ago into the Bible and billions of years into the future in the Bible. I mean that they're also. It means they're adding death before sin. It is not good. And, um, do you know about the... There's also the gap theory, the H theory, yeah, yeah, basic yeah. evolution. Yeah. I have I have my book called Truth and Genesis, Exposing a Lie of Evolution in Millions of Years. Mm -hmm. I can show it to you. All right, yeah. If you want to know about... Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. But it's not... But it's not good to believe in, but it's... And no, you can't add evolution to the Bible at all because you have this death and evil and sin way before Adam and Eve came on the scene. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. But not, but it's all, like you said, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dumb, stupid, dangerous, okay? Like, all the reasons that you said. But it also takes away the faith of babes in Christ and people that have gone to church it takes so it ruins their it destroys their faith uh, actually Charles Darwin before he came up with this theory of evolution he actually graduated from Bible college he actually graduated from Bible college so, it's all about hating God, because they hate God, and they didn't want to uh, recognize Him as God, 
And the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, clearly says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. I watch a lot of, I watch people that believe in evolution, I watch a lot of evolution stuff on YouTube. I study what, I study what they teach, and no, I don't like it at all. But I find out, I'm cheat, I'm trying to find out what they teach, so I can expose it as false. Same thing with me, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Now, yeah, and evolutionists teach that the Earth was a hard molten rock in the past. And they're also saying that about the future, too. Yeah, well, the Bi yeah, exactly. It's the exact opposite, actually. The Bible says that it that it was actually covered in water. Yep, you're right. It is, and the also teach and the evolutionists also teach that Earth will become a hard to mold a rock again in the future. Mhm. Mm well. I mean. Uh, I mean. Chrono, uh, biblically, <laughs> that's correct, because God's going to be raining fire and brimstone on, <laughs> on planet Earth. <laughs> and God's judgment rests. But they teach that's going to happen in five billion years in the future. Exactly. I, d I don't even think we have 20 years left to go. I'm not, a, I'm not setting a time for the rapture. For <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, evolutionists teach that the sun will become a red giant star in the in five billion years in the future. Now I don't believe in that. I believe in young earth creations. I believe that God will replace the sun and moon with a new heaven and a new earth in the exactly. new Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what evolutionists teach about the future of the sun and that's why they believe that the earth will become a hot molten rock again in the future. Mm-hmm. So no, I don't believe that so no Earth wasn't a hot molten rock and I don't think that Earth will, will be a hot molten rock again in five billion years in the future, because it's because we don't we don't have that much time. Of course not. Yeah, and and prof prophetically speaking, yeah, we don't have that much time because if you see how our country is going, where our country is going, I mean, you can't say that we have five billion years to go uh, till the time of the rapture. And now Christians are saying this. Um, now Christians are saying this. I've I've seen back to the molten rock thing. I've also seen that people. I've also seen people say that the that they're that the sun's going to expand so much that it's going to engulf the first four planets of the solar system. I mean, come on. You mean, that's in five billion years, <laughs> and that is not going to happen. Mm-mm. That isn't going to, I know, I don't believe in that at all, because I believe in young earth creationism. I believe the spherical earth, not a flat earth, if you want to know, but I did make a video last June, it was called, the Bible teaches the earth is spherical, not flat, and I also made a video called, well, what happened if the earth is flat? Look it up, I have it on YouTube. Yep. So, anyway... We're going to, we're going, to, I'm going to bring my evidence to disprove evolution because there's a lot of evidence that evidence, quote unquote, that people will bring up to support evolution, but it can easily be debunked with the Bible and uh, with scientific evidence. So, um, do you also want to make a movie of disproving the flat Earth? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, sure. Because I know I don't like the flat Earth. Is it is 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 as stupid as evolution, or is evolution way more stupid? I don't even know. It's it's as dumb as retarded as the one mist doctrine. I heard someone say. <laughs> Have you heard of the one mist doctrine? Uh, modalism. Yeah, modalism. Yeah, I I, I did teach the Trinity. I did teach, I did make a video about the Trinity. Last May, it's called One God Be Person the Trinity. I believe in the Trinity. I don't want to believe in modalism. Modalism is. I think it's all. I think modalism is just all, you know, stupid. It's a damnable heresy. Know. It's a damnable heresy. Okay, okay, I'll just say that. So, yeah. I'm going to start bringing up evidence to disprove evolution. Number one. 
the false evidence that is that is supposed to support evolution that Darwin's finches. Now, if you study the HMS Beagle and Ch Chuck D, Charles Darwin, um, he went to the Galapagos Islands and he found 14 different species of birds. Now, he said, I think all these shared a common ancestor. Well, I bet you're right, Chuck. It was a bird. But he's wrong about he's wrong about evolution. It was a bird. That was the common ancestor. It was a bird, not an amoeba. Not a rock either. Exactly. That he found fourteen different species of birds, and he concluded that birds and bananas are related. Well, they well they're teaching they, they're coming from a rock, and I don't believe in that. So they believe in the beginning, so we believe in the beginning of God, and they believe in the beginning of dirt. That's I think they're, yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. Or they believe in the beginning of Big Bang. <laughs> so, God. <laughs> how? I don't know how, I don't know how long ago they're using, maybe about 13 to 20 billion years, but we're using 6,000. Years. Or is it 7,000? Yes. Yeah, of course. Excuse me? Go, guys. Guys, go. So, so if we were to, um, and the Big Bang Theory is just so dumb. It's like saying you throw a grenade in a junkyard and you're going to get a Mercedes or something. I mean, oh, that, okay. that's how dumb it is, literally. That's how dumb it is. And I literally heard someone say, if you shake up enough helium, you you might just grow yourself some humans. You said, oh, okay. Yeah. You said that. Hmm. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. So, we believe in the King James Version Bible. You agree? I know not. I know, I know. Not the, not not the, the modern, modern versions. Not the modern Bible I know. versions. I know. I know. I know you're trying to say not the modern Bible versions. The modern Bible versions have verses taken out. And they Look at Wikipedia. And they change the very deity of Christ. They say that... And look at Wikipedia. They say oh, that... Yeah, sorry. You I'll go, you, you go, you go. Okay, I look at Wikipedia, Wikipedia, and Wikipedia just shows what kind of verses... Um, the modern versions are teaching. What kind of modern versions are mi what kind of Bible verses the modern versions are missing? Look at Wikipedia. Wikipedia uh, type missing verses of the modern Bible versions, and you can look at Wikipedia uh, which verses um, the modern Bible versions are missing. I think we're missing about sixteen to seventeen verses. Yeah. And I'll use the NIV and the NIV and the NIV is one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if we, so, I mean, yeah, it's just like, throw the NIV out the window. First of all, the King James Bible is the, ins the only word of God that is, the only word of God. I know, not the NIV. Exactly. And people will say that the Bible is irrelevant today because it's not scientifically correct. Which is I know. totally not true. Because be even before people started washing their hands, the Bible said to wash your hands in running water. And, that and, stay, away I know, and stay away from carcasses. <laughs> and start as, as, as just being dead animals. Yeah. Yeah. And it also yeah, and it also says that the that the life of flesh is in the blood, and it, according to legend, George Washington, when they were letting his blood out, when they were bloodletting him, he had a King James Version Bible sitting next to him on his desk that said in Leviticus chapter seventeen verse eleven, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Oh. The book of Revelation will tell you 
um, about, about, about... Before people started washing their hands, the Bible said to wash your hands in running water. And that and the... Away, you know, and stay away from carcasses. Turn. And stay away from carcasses. And just dead animals. Yeah. Yeah. Try and it also... Yeah. And it also says that the... That the life of flesh is in the blood. And... It, according to legend, George Washington, when they were letting his blood out, when they were bloodletting him, he had a King James Version Bible sitting next to him on his desk that said in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Well, the book of Revelation will tell you um, about, 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 about adding and, sub and subtracting verses in the Bible. The book of Revelation. Yeah, I'm still here. I think I'm still here. Um, do you have your Bible? Yeah, I have my Bible. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think the Book of Revelation does tell you um how to about adding subtracting verses in the Bible, like adding evolution or and subtracting verses people you don't like. Yeah, yeah. It says their name will be blotted out of the Book of Life. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It does say that. And it means they'll just go to a lake of fire then. Yeah. So, anyway, back to the evolution. I don't know how we got here. <laughs> I don't know how we got here. Back to the evolution theory. And how do we get from one animal to another species? Okay, one species to another. They, people will mock, our, the people will mock the Bible and say, and they will say, hey, you expect me to believe that all the dog breeds we see today came from two dogs? Well, here's the thing. They believe that all the animals that we see today came from two animals. Hello. So, <laughs> they think it's weird to believe that uh, a poodle is related to a Rottweiler or whatever. But, but they don't think it's weird to think that we all came from a rock, okay, or an amoeba, at the very least. Both, both your sisters. Now the Cambrian explosion. Have you heard of the? Have you heard of this? The Cambrian explosion. I never heard of it. I never heard about the. I heard about. I heard of Pangaea. Yeah. And Pangaea Ultima, but. I don't know. I don't know if the Pangaea theory is compatible with the Bible. Mm -hmm. I do believe in the Pangaea theory, but I don't know if it's compatible with the Bible. Because I don't know the the Bible doesn't make you. I don't know. I don't. I know. I, and I do know that Ken Hovind believes well, in the Canby theory, but I don't know if the Canby theory is true. I think it's false. The so. what theory? The what theory? The Canby theory. The Canby theory. What's that? I, I haven't heard of it. Um, it's in my book called To the Genesis Exposing the Lie of Evolution in Millions of Years. Alright, yeah. Yeah, so. I believe that plate tectonics. I don't know if it was all arranged as what the scientists arrange it as Pangaea. I believe in plate tectonics and I believe that it's compatible with the Bible. Because the Bible literally says in Isaiah, I forgot exactly where, but it said in Isaiah that the animals of the islands will meet the animals of the nations, the great nations. And obviously, okay. and obviously I have my I have my book. Here. It yeah. says it says some people believe when it have some people may have been a can be a water ice above the atmosphere before the flood. This is known as the can be theory. Hmm. But but the answer is that the water is still above it says there's, there's water still above the clouds. There's, there's, there's water still above the sky. It means there's clouds above. This means the can be theory is false. Exactly. Yeah, I have my book, but... I mean, 
If you can get this book from, from Amazon. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. I don't. Based on what you you just read to me, I don't think that it matches the Bible with what the Bible says. Because yeah, and also the water standing in the the earth standing in the water and out of the water is also a great another great proof that the earth is not flat. All right, because if the earth if there's parts of the earth that's standing out of the water and there's parts of the earth that's standing in the water. Then how can we get a flat earth out of that, right? How can we get a flat earth? <coughs> right. I believe in a spherical earth. Exactly, yeah. Okay. I don't want to... Yeah, so, is to me... So, is so is Tyler Dolka what I call a false prophet? I think he'd be a false that... prophet, yeah. I think he'd be a false prophet. Just asking, because I think it's what he is. I don't think he's saved at all. I mean, if you can't even trust what God says about the earth, that the earth is round, if you can't even trust that, then how can you trust the Bible about anything else? Right? Right. I, I teach outer space. I Look, I make videos about 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 our solar system and other solar systems. I teach about exo. I even talk about exoplanets, which is planets from different solar systems. Yeah, planets from different other solar systems. Yeah. I will look, and I have we have the Milky Way galaxy, and also another galaxy is close to us, which is the Andromeda galaxy. Mm -hmm. You guys haven't heard about that galaxy. No, I. I haven't really studied about space recently. I studied, I studied astronomy, but I read it on the computer. I teach, okay? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to debate, you know, I, and if you want to debate, I'll let debate Ken Holbit, because, because Ken Holbit has his own, um, because, because Ken Holbit likes to debate people. That's all. Yeah. So, the Big Bang is, I think, one of the most dumbest ideas that have ever popped up into existence. Nobody has seen a star form, though. Nobody, no. Because God said that when he created the, the earth and everything other than the earth, he said that it was done and perfect. So there's... I don't believe that there's any births of stars that have happened recently. That's that's the chart of the Bible. Here's the chart of evolution. I don't know if you can see it as well. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, don't draw on that. Don't draw on it. Oh. That's a good book. I got an Amazon. Bum, 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 do the... Jimmy W. Willis hey, is, 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 is the truth in Genesis. Bring it over here. Mm -hmm. Bring, give me that pen. Go with mommy. Go with mommy. It's hot in here. So, yeah. Adolf Hitler said one time, let me control the textbooks and I'll control the state. So, and if you want to promulgate the Bible in the schools, then you'll have the entire nation... I mean, supporting the Bible. But if you want to have, but if you want to have these magazines, Scientific American and stuff like that, promulgated in the schools, then you're gonna have the entire nation talking about evolution and Scientific American. I have. Oh yeah, Adolf Hitler was a Catholic, and then he started that book. Yes, Adolf Hitler was a Catholic that believed in Darwin evolution. Exactly. Yeah. I haven't studied. Yeah. And no Catholic and no Catholicism believe in believe in a different kind of salvation than we do. Yeah. So it's either they think, yeah. so and people believe in evolution when they're Christians, but literally it's either you choose this or this. I mean there's no middle way. There's no gap theory and there's no uh theistic DH theory. Yeah. And there's no theistic no. evolution. Yeah, I have. Let me see. They also have um, 
They also have progressive creation in there too. Because if you read, the, they also have. Let me see. There it is. The human population is one of them. Yeah, we have reached about seven billion people in 2011. I think it's like about eight billion right now. Seven point six billion, I think, was the last time I checked. You guys, okay. We also got okay about this book right here. Talk about supernova rings, the drifting moon, comets, Earth's magnetic field, Sahara Desert, salt in the oceans, copper fourteen, and diamonds, and fresh dinosaur bones. Yep. And people say that the proof for evolution, the proof that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago and that the Earth is billions of years old, they said that the proof of, for this is carbon dating. Okay, and if you've ever watched any of Kent Hovind's seminars, Dr. Kent Hovind's seminars, you know that this is a fraud. Because here's the thing, Do uh, see, here's the thing, carbon dating only, the, the only thing that carbon dating does is it measures how much carbon-14 is inside a bone or fossil and how fast it's, uh, and how fast it's depleting. So it'd be like this. You walk into a room and there's a candle lit, and I tell and I ask you, when was the candle lit? And you say, oh, I don't know, it was burning when I got here. Let's do some empirical science. Uh, we measure how tall the candle is, say seven inches. When was it lit? Maybe, maybe me was lit about a minute ago, but that's it. Exactly. Or maybe it was lit two hours ago. Right? Maybe it was... Right. And let's do some more empirical thinking. Uh, let's see how fast it's burning. Okay? How fast it's burning, let's say an inch an hour. When was it lit? I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have a hard... People are going to have a hard time figuring that out unless they're willing to make some assumptions. See... A lot. Yeah, exactly. And you have to... Uh, ass you have to assume... That the amount of carbon fourteen. That's carbon fourteen. Yeah, let me look at my book to see how long the carbon fourteen can last. But I think it only lasts about twelve thousand years. Let me see. Well, here it says it's any older than one hundred thousand years old. It cannot. Um, it will. De it will be decayed by then. No point. It was no longer. It will decay by then. No. No longer traceable. Mm -hmm. So it means. Carbon-14 will just turn to nitrogen-14 if it's... So, yeah, you won't find carbon-14. You'll just find nitrogen-14 if carbon-14 was millions of years old. Exactly. Um, if... Okay, so... So, let's measure the amount of carbon-14 is in the bone. How fast it's leaving. When did the animal die? You don't have a clue. Well, we have carbon-12 inside our bodies, and when we die, it turns, it turns into carbon-14. And then when it decays, it turns back into, it turns into nitrogen-14. Exactly, exactly. So, so carbon-14 is definitely unreliable, especially of how long you can uh, measure how much of it is in there. It's only accurate to a certain point. So, yeah. It's definitely not reliable because of the fact that you can't find out when it was, when the animal died. I mean, think of it. I mean, think about it. Actually, there was this one time when two creationists grabbed some igneous rock from Mount St. Helens and took it to a... Yes. Yes, it's a, it's a reservoir for bacteria. Good bacteria. The tail bone is for sitting. Wisdom teeth is is people is proof that people used to live, grow larger and live longer way back in the pre-flower world. I don't know how people grew way back in the pre-flower world. Maybe about the 12 feet tall. I mean, that all just proves the Bible. If we're if we have wisdom teeth and it just proves that we were taller, then 
It actually just proves that the Bible is true because it says that there were giants in the Bible. Oh, it proves that I know, true. like... Yeah, well... If you want to... Now... And I don't... And I'm talking about the Bible, okay? I'm not talking about um, other religions like um, Hinduism, okay? That's another false religion right there. Okay? Yeah. And no, I read... I know. I read Star Wars and that's just Hinduism and I don't believe in that kind of thing. So. Yeah, so. I'm talking about Christianity. Mm -hmm. So let's get into what the Bible says. Why do they teach this in schools? Why do they promulgate evolution and the Big Bang in schools today? Okay, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 11. I mean 14, I'm sorry. Oh, they can read it. It says here in Psalm chapter 14, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. So I believe what the Bible says, and this is what it says. And the Bible also says that of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if they're, if they're saying in their heart there is no God, then they should say that out of their mouth. And yes, we should sure find that, and yes, we do find that. Because, who, have you heard the book of, of, have you heard of, the book of, have you heard of Richard Dawkins? Yeah, yeah I heard of Richard Dawkins, and, and also Bill Nye, I think the reprobates. Yes, they are. Because, Richard Dawkins said, the God of the Old Testament, which, the God of the Old Testament is the same God as the New Testament. The God of the Old I'm going to go check on the clothes. Alright, yeah. I'll be right back, i got to check on the clothes. Alright. But you can talk, you can still talk back, okay? Alright, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. This is, this is, uh, this is just looking at my computer. Alright. Now, uh, now, alright. channel had a strike before and we couldn't do a, the live stream of the other video that we made and I my iPad limited me to uploading up to a 15 minute video so I had to cut off the video in three parts but now the uh, the strike has expired and now I can uh, upload oh. and yeah live stream. Until we get a preaching against your preaching against Solomon I know yeah yeah, we just, yeah, I don't want, yeah, well, we just, yeah, I don't know, I won't call, I guess I wouldn't call it sodomite, because I know people will call it homosexual, won't call it sodomite, because I probably use a Bible, the Bible word. Yeah, so, start asking a few questions, uh, number one question I wanted to ask you, what do you, what is evolution, in your opinion? Um, well, I can show you the six meanings of evolution. There's six, there's six meanings of it. Right. If I can, uh... If I can get it up, but yeah. Well, I do have the picture of the six meanings of evolution in my computer, so... Here it is. Right here. Now, number one is cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space and matter, nothing in the big bang theory. All right. Nobody has observed that. No one. Now, chemical evolution is all elements being evolved from hydrogen. Nobody's observed that either. Stellar evolution is stars and planets 
form of gas clouds. Nobody's observed that either. Organic evolution is, is light against both inanimate matter. Nobody's observed that. Macro evolution is everyone, animals and plants change from one kind into another, meaning one kind, meaning from one kind to another. Meaning like a dinosaur turning into a bird. Nobody's observed that. No. Well, the next one is called microevolution, called variations form within the kind. Now that one does happen, but making this evidence is for the other five, and it is not. My microevolution is variation within uh, certain kinds, right? Right. So they think yeah, they they will they will use number six, but they think it's magically got it to the other five and it is not. Right. So, so so in micro evolution uh uh poodle is related to a Rottweiler and a uh a pooch is related to a Great Dane or whatever, right? Right, but they think it's Magically evidence for the other five, and it is not. Right. So they, so they don't want to, so only number six is what we observe, but the other ones we don't. So, and, uh, and, um, and they want to pull the came from a rock. They don't, they don't want, they don't think about the rock. They, they think about taking this organism or part of your own soup. But I think about the rock thing. Right. So, why do you think people would believe in evolution? I mean, we already have said that, we've said in the last video that evolution is stupid, clearly stupid, but it's not at all. But why would people ignorantly believe it to be true? Because they don't want to believe in God. That's the problem. They don't want to believe in God. They just want to, they'd rather believe in something else instead of God. Right. They just want to get away from God. So, and if and if, if we're going to do, and we're going to do much to do much of the Bible, they might want to leave and colonize another planet or moon. That I heard that from a lot of people on television and on YouTube. I heard of, I heard of, I heard of a lot of YouTube videos of people colonizing about want to colonize Mars and Venus and Mercury and also the moons of Jupiter. And Saturn and Uranus and Neptune. I've heard about people on that in Pluto and and also Earth. They want to get away from God. I'm not sure I can get away from God by, by colonizing planets and moons. Right. Or more planets. Right. So I mean we've already explained well, so what why would people label the Bible as scientifically inaccurate? In your in your opinion, why? Well, they think it's anti-science. That's what they believe. That they want to believe in. They want to believe in millions of years, and I can't believe in thousands of years. Have, have you ever, have you ever had anybody tell you that the Bible is scientifically inaccurate? And, but. Yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of some people, yeah, I mean, a lot of, maybe a lot of YouTube. I delete their comments, so I block people, because I, I block people when they, uh, when they don't, um, if they don't like it, and, and they call me, uh, if they call me too much, I block them. I don't want to block people, but. Block them if you I know you block, I play Nintendo. But. Yeah, I only block, like. Two people. I think I blocked Space Megalodon and I play Nintendo and his other channels. Just, they're stupid. Well, I know there's some people out there that say, well, what about the Christian scientists? What about the quote unquote Christian scientists that believe in evolution? 
uh, why do you think Christian, some Christians, certain Christians would believe in... Well, they're called false Christians. Can you talk about the gap theory? Yes. Gap theory is, they want to believe there's a gap between um, Genesis 1, physically Genesis 1 and 2. I got it right here on my book. You can get it from Genesis.com. It's called Truth and Genesis Exposing a Lie in Evolution in Mystery Years. You can look at it, you can get it up on Amazon. But you can also look at it at Truth and Genesis.com. Yeah, this live stream cut out. Now it's now it's replayed. Resumed. Sorry folks. Well, they want to believe in the people of Well, 
they won't say rock. They will say they mean bubble and sneak as an organism. Where does this thing organism came from? A rock. So you believe it, you just don't want to think about it. Right. But I know they believe they were was a hot molten rock in the past. Yeah. They never observed that. They just just think it is a fact. They just want to believe it. It's what? their faith. One of the reasons why I believe that atheists don't want to uh, acknowledge that is because they don't want to acknowledge that there's someone that's in charge of them and that they have to subject to him and that God will want uh, you to serve him in your life and they want to serve themselves and they want to. Uh, do their own thing with their life. It's just wicked. Well, they don't want. They don't want God to tell them what to do. Well, right. you don't have to do everything that God tells you to do after you get saved, anyways. Right. And you can you can do what God tells you to do. You can play a video game, and still be saved. You can watch television, and still be saved. Right. So you can go to the movies, and still be saved. Right. You don't have to do everything that God tells you to do after you get saved. Right. But it's just that it's just that people have been so indoctrinated with the fact that oh you have to repent of all your sins to be saved, you have to do work to be saved. I mean, really, no you don't. No you don't. I mean that's why I believe that people don't want to accept the gospel at the door. Like they don't want to accept the fact that God is watching them and that God uh God will punish them for on the earth if whatever they do uh, that's of this world, but He will never take away their salvation. That's a very uh, misunderstood and misguided idea that these churches have promoted. Maybe you should preach against. Maybe you should preach against the Bible. Because he believes in, he believes he, he oh, believes yeah. in salvation. Yeah. And he's from church. So. And he's a vegan. That, that queer little sissy is a vegan. That's my guess. But anyway. He, he admitted it in his, one of his own videos. He said, I'm openly vegan and... Because the Bible says that we are to be vegan, blah, blah, blah. And when God told Peter, all of that that I have told, all of that I have called cleansed, called that not thou common or unclean. So God said not to call it unclean. And this, so, guy, this guy's not even drinking milk. Okay. I love milk. Okay. I, I love milk. I'll play with the evidence of the young earth. Have you? Because one of them is a human population. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, no matter what, evolution, evolution is just is just a way to is just one of many ways to. Uh, how, what's that word? Uh, justify abortion and racism. Because Charles Darwin was a racist, flat out, because the title of his book, it's not Charles Darwin on the origin of species. It's Charles Darwin on the origin of species for the advancement of favored races. Um, I don't know if I can find it in my book. Where did it talk about? Where, okay, it says right here. First of all, I'd like to point out the Bible that there's only one race, the human race. The Bible says we're all in one blood. That's what it says in my book. Of men, for the dwell on the face of the earth, 
and has determined the time before appointed, and they are bound to the bounds of their jurisdiction. So. And Richard Dawkins, I hope he dies. I mean, he's like eight, he's like almost 80 years old right now. I, I just hope God just strikes him dead. Because he's clearly a hater of God uh, in his own book, uh, The God Religion. He says, God, the God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all of fiction. He also proud of it. And then... And then, then that long list of characteristics of what the God of the Old Testament and this, and by the way, anyone that's listening to this live stream, this God of the Old Testament is the same God of, as the New Testament. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <clears throat> but all right, racism. Uh, racist is one of the uh, characteristics of God in that book. So. No, God is not a racist. He said, I will gather those uh, that are not of my flock, and they'll be of my flock. And so God wants to bring together the ra the, ra the races so that they can be saved and so that they can go to the local congregation, the local New Testament church, and whatever God wants them to do with their life. I'm going to do it, but Richard Dawkins a rape, that's a reprobate, he's probably a pedophile. Yes, he, he, yes, Richard Dawkins is accepted pedophilia, all right. I heard about it from Matt Powell, he's accepted pedophilia. All right. And he called Matt Powell crazy, but the, the Richard Dawkins one who was crazy, and, and pedophilia is, this is what me, and this one me, Richard Dawkins, I thought I'm older. Well, I can call him older, but yeah, old is just another name for me. Alright, so what are you saying? Yeah, well, Richard Dawkins did accept pedophilia, and the pedophilia made him, made Richard Dawkins a god older. But yeah, well, old is just the same thing as hate. We don't have to worry about that. Yes, he's a reprobate. Same thing with Bill Nye. I think I, I would I would like Richard Dawkins and Bill Nye to die soon. Same thing with the Crab Brothers on PBS Kids. Yeah. Because the Crab Brothers are are making are have you have a show called Wild Crabs. They're teaching the evolution of animals. I'm not sure if you ever watched PBS Kids, but I did. Is it a new show that they're putting together, or is it something like older? Um, PBS Kids is, is for children. Oh, no. Is there teaching children evolution in Canada? The fact that they're teaching evolution in animals, I think the fact that they're in their, maybe in their, they keep trying now, but they're teaching evolution children. So, I don't know, but I can make a video of the kids the wild cats, but I'll put it on YouTube later. But it's talking about, but I used to tell them, I did not sing about all I said of the wildfires is this, that you need to say, and they're hurting people's lives by saying that by saying there's no God, we got here to blind chance. That's what hurting people's lives. And I now wake up, there is a God, and it ain't you and it ain't me. It ain't me that's like you know the yeah, that's what that's what King Hobbit said though. He said we talked about Bill and I. Yeah, we and, and I just don't we don't get saved, we get judged on judgment day. There's a point in a man wants to die, but after this to judgment. And not only the Crab Brothers, anyone who is out there in the live in the listening to this live stream, you need to get saved. If you do, if you do not know if you are will go to heaven, if you are going to heaven, because it's something that you need to decide. What do you think? And well, it's by grace. Not by works, because I don't like and don't listen to false converts or false prophets. Just ignore them. That's what I would do. So, and by all blah blah blah, this one needs people on YouTube. So, I will box. I'll never listen to Alan Party anymore. 
you know, you let's play the one state always say, but he's using the NIV, so I'll never use I'll never listen to him anymore. So Well I don't want to listen to people that are that are because the people who claim they'll believe a one state always state, but they don't. Because your belief is if you think you believe it, doesn't mean you do believe it. Did you watch my video about Ken Ham? Yes. Yeah, you know, I think it was a false talk, but I want to keep it to myself. I don't want anyone else about it. Because, because um, I just spoke to this. I was reading the stuff, and this is in Genesis. I read the stuff. But when I was reading it, they were getting verses from the NIV. So ESV, they're getting verses from the ESV, ESV, this English Standard Version. I mean, King James. So I had to go to King James Bible online to go to go find out what it says in the King James because they're using the ESV. Yeah. I mean, to both their backdrop, the back of their doctrine. Ken Ham isn't even saved. Uh, he believes in works-based salvation. I mean, he is good to learn about creation. I believe. Like there's certain things that he get does get things right on, like the or the spherical earth and creation. But but she but in that but Ken Ham he's wrong about salvation. He's wrong about the King James only, and he's wrong about being a fundamentalist. He he's not a fundamentalist. He's not an independent fundamental Baptist Christian. By any standards. And, uh, I don't know if he did, but. I know a little bit about Kenny himself first. One of them, one of Kenny himself first is, is, is an astronomer called Stevenson Lyle. He, he's one of his, he's one of his, um, he's one of the Kenny himself first. So I do I do I do listen to Einstein Genesis only to talk about only to only learn about science, okay? Not not what they're not what they're believing in. Yeah. I'm not defending Einstein Genesis, I'm just trying to right. defend science, that's all. And there's some problems with Ken Holman as well, but but Ken Holman's believing yes, Ken Holman believes in the candy theory. Um, I do, and there's the, and there is the candy theory, and if I, and my book just talk about the candy theory, if I can get to it, it's in a free flood world, though. Right? You, you read the entire book? Uh, it's talking about the free flood world. But yeah, the free flood world. Did you read that entire book, Truth and Genesis? It's called it's supposed to be a line of evolution in millions of years. Right. It can be theory that some people will leave there might be in a candy of water and ice the above the atmosphere before the flood, this is known as the candy theory. Right. I'll read it to you, but it's a little longer paragraph. Yeah, it says the idea of the candy theory is from Genesis chapter six verse seven it says, And God said that there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and divide the waters from the waters. But the firmament is the atmosphere. There's it's not a goal the flat earth is one of people to believe. We have to know the earth is a sphere, not a flat disc. You know, what, oh. what all these flat charts believe is basically we're just a, we're just a, a snow globe. So, that's basically what okay. all it boils down to. The answer is the reason why I believe the can't be theory is false because because um, because if there's if there's still water above then the can't be theory is false. If there's still water above to where the birds fly, yes, there's still clouds above where the birds fly. The can't be theory is simply not true. I don't want to I don't want to read the whole thing. So it says right here. Uh, if there's still water above, if there's still water above, then the canopy theory is false. There's still water above where the birds fly. Yes, there's still water. There's still clouds where the birds fly. The canopy theory is simply not true. But yes, the canopy theory is false. But yes, you can watch Ken hold it. Don't ever believe.
we have anything that says. All right. That's all. I believe that there are people that listen to me and disagree with a few things on me. Probably not major things like salvation by grace through faith, but if there are, hey, you better get saved. You better believe in salvation by faith only by grace through faith. But if I mean, there's people that I believe that there might be people that listen to me and believe just a little bit differently from me. I mean, I don't really care. I don't think they well, care. If they're believing the tranny, that's fine. I won't. But not, it's not modalism. Modalism is just a full blown false doctrine. That, with it. And, and call and call and call Jesus Jesus Christ, not the name the Antichrist, which is Yeshua. Yeah. Be. And I watch Ed, and I did watch Stephen Anderson's um, video. Um, I did. I did. I did watch Stephen. And I watched. I did watch Stephen Anderson's video um, about the Greek name of Jesus Christ, and he's talking about. And he and he preached against the. He went against the false, the the fake name of Jesus Christ, anyways. If we could guess you should what? Yeah. This is good because the human roots movement is stupid. Yes? But anyway. What is it? You okay? Yeah, I was I'll... talking about people roots with it, that's all. Hey, are you busy tomorrow? Oh, me? Oh, I'm sorry, I'll be volunteering at the library tomorrow, but that's what I'll be doing, that's all. Yeah, I'll be busy tomorrow. What times? Like, from what to what? Five. So, three to five, that's two hours. So that's it? I'll be working in the library tomorrow from 3 to 5, so that's two hours. Okay. So, no. so, do you mind if I call, so do you mind if I call you again at like 1 in your time? At your time? What? Do you mind if I call you again tomorrow because my Chromebook's gonna die? Okay, well. Well, uh, no, I'll, I probably, you can just call me on Saturday because it'll be a lot of people be very busy tomorrow. Alright. But yeah, All right. but yeah, um, but All right. yeah. Well, you have, you have any last words? You have two minutes. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of things that you can look about. There's a lot of things about the younger. You can look up, you can look about supernova rings, drifting moon, comets, Sahara Desert, Earth's been a field. Gold in the ocean is cover 14 in diamonds, and also fresh diamonds are bald. Alright. Um, you look at that, you can look at the other Sorry, YouTube people. All right. Oh, man. I got my tribe.
Alright. Uh, I got a lot of them. This book does talk about the other. A lot of evidence that they got there. I'm going to give it to you, but there's a lot of reading, though, so I'll look at a little bit of it. Alright. Back. My camera's back. This is it. Here. So, you can look up about the supernova rings, the nifty moon, human population, comets, earth and egg, the old Sahara Desert. Salty oceans, covered quarantine, and fresh dinosaur bones. Yes, comments can only last for 100,000 years. Yeah. So then why are, so, why are there still comments? And they're only, but they only last a bit. And then there's some that can last as in 10,000 years. So. All right, yeah. So, the first is billions of years old, and there should be more comments. That's the end. Yep. And the Earth's been in a field. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so the Earth's been in a field, but declined 10% in the last 150 years and 40% in the last 1,000 years. So, that means that. And it means if the Earth is billions of years old, it shouldn't have been in a field anymore. And as the moon is traveling around the Earth, it's getting, I believe, two inches away from the Earth as it's traveling. Yeah, well. So, yeah. if the Earth is millions of years old, then the moon would be literally touching the Earth. And I did the calculations. I just gave the ACS three billion years and then... I mean, it's like the moon and the earth are like right next to each other. If not, they're just like, they're, the moon is right in the core. I mean, I did the, all the, I did the calculations. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, 1.4 billion years ago, the earth and the moon will be touching, will be touching one another, even the moon will collide with the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, and I don't know why some people will believe yeah, what the Earth was a hot molten rock in the past. Like, they're not just believing that. They're not believing that the Earth will be a hot molten rock again in, in the, the future. future. But like 5 billion years in the future, though. Right. They said that the sun would become basically right here. They said the sun would become a red giant star in 5 billion years in the future. Yeah. I'm not this up, though, but that's what they're believing in. Yeah. Foolishness. Uh, yeah, they, they wanted to believe that the sun will, 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 will engulf Mercury, Venus, Earth, and probably Mars, and probably the asteroid belt. I'm not sure of their, I'm not sure of their, um, talking about the asteroid belt, but, but that's what they're believing in, so, because, and, uh, so to me, and to me, I believe that the sun is not going to become a red giant star in five billion years in the future at all. Because I believe, because, and I look at my computer, God will create a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. And God will replace the sun with that. Jesus will replace the sun and move with a new earth and a new Jerusalem. But yes, the sun will still be, this. yeah, the sun will still be there, but it won't. But you won't need it when you're in New Jerusalem. So, is the sun going to become a giant star in five billion years in the future? I don't think so. But that's what evolution is one to believe. Right. All right. So. But anyway. And it. So we've covered so far. What is evolution? Uh, why do people believe in evolution? Why do some Christians believe in evolution? Uh, what was the main motive behind uh, discovering quote unquote evolution? Big Bang. 
You know, the Big Bang is you know, beginning of the universe. But they have a lot of theories for the ending of the universe. One of them is the Big Freeze. But the Big Freeze is what they call heat death. When the, when, when the universe has no more energy left. Mm-hmm. And then the Big Rip, which is when the universe splits apart. And then and the Big Crunch, which is our first Big Bang. And then, and then, and then the, the big slur, which is a universe being stuck into a black hole. But both of these four theories are believing in because they don't want to believe that. I think the most logical to believe that them is probably the big threes. But me, I don't believe in that. So, yeah, I'll- yeah, I believe. I don't believe it. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'm gonna bring something. Okay. You ever seen these before? No, but you can. Nobody can tell me what it is. They're called Framing the World Training Cards. You fall asleep and Pastor Anderson, right? I subscribe to his channel. I only watch. I only watch a little bit of his videos. Mm. Well, his son and a friend of his, and and his friend's wife made designed these cards and. They put them, uh, and then they sold them, and friend gave these to me. Here's the. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But yeah, I don't know if the Bible says anything about the ending of the universe, but it's probably the same thing. God means new heaven and a new earth. Right. So, right. So. I don't think, I don't, I don't think any of these four theories are going to happen, even the one, so, so, I, I don't think, me. I don't think there so, will be an end of the universe, to be honest. So, no big freeze, no big rip, no big crunch, no big slur, right, so, but those the theories of the ending of the year are going to evolution, not the Bible. Have you heard of Pastor Roger Menace? Yes, I know his YouTube channel got taken down. Yeah. This is him. Yes, I know his. Yes, I know his YouTube channel got taken down, and he says that he's going to flood um, YouTube with his own doctrine. That's what I heard from him. This is this is the guy's church that we go to, Pastor Romero. Sad fat okay. fresh church. We go to his church. Okay. Okay. This one's the one that preached the Ken Ham exposed sermon that I put at the end of my video. Okay, well, I'm probably just gonna watch creation. Yeah, I do watch videos sometimes of people abuse use the Marvel version, but only to learn about science, mm-hmm. not the not. I don't want, I would ignore, I would ignore the modern Bible versions, because I know the modern Bible versions teach salvation by works. Right. Um, so, I will learn, I will watch videos about other people to learn creation about. And even when I'm watching videos about people about evolution, it's like, it's like an exposure that is false. I'm not going to comment on their videos. I'm just going to make my own video about it. And it's going to be my own video about it, and, and tell, it, tell it it's false, and that's it. Because yeah. I don't want you to comment, I don't want atheists to comment on my YouTube channel. I want them to make a video about me, about my, about my so called bad ideas. Just make a video about me, and then um, just make a video.
didn't give a call about my own so-called bad ideas, and then uh, that's fine. Let's do that. Don't comment to me. Just make a video about it. That's what I'll. That's what I'll tell them to do. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, sold in the oceans. Okay. Now, the Sahara Desert is about four thousand years old. So that's another evidence of a young Earth. But if the Earth is about, yeah, if the, if the, if the flood happened about forty-four hundred years ago, that's what my book says. Uh, and, there, and it's very difficult to have a desert under a worldwide flood. So yeah, so the desert must be forty-four hundred years old. God's word is true. Okay, so the desert is about so yeah, Sahara Desert is about four thousand years old. I'm not sure how old is. Antarctica, but it's probably the same age as Sahara Desert, if I'm not mistaken. Now, salt in the oceans, yeah, are three and a half percent salt, but yeah, and then evolution should be the oceans from about 3.8 billion years ago. But then, but if that, if that's true, then then, then you will then you have to expect to see 70 times more salt in the ocean than, than what we see today. Now, October 14. Now, October 14 can only last for 100,000 years. So, if the Earth is billions of years old, it should not have any more October 14. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm just pulling up a chair. Okay. Now, fresh dinosaur bones. And now, the fresh dinosaur bones have, um, let's see, it has, uh, has soft tissue. And um and red blood cells. Right. And they thought it was a transverse rex. But yeah, if, if these bones were sixty five million years old, then they won't have soft tissue or red blood or red blood cells still inside. Meaning that they will mean the bone would have decayed by then. It's like four so, is it like 4.30 at your place right now? Yeah, it's 4.30. 4.24 right now. 4.24. Yeah, I might eat dinner at 5. Mm. So, I might eat dinner at 5 o'clock. Mm. So, if you want to end the video, you can, but... It's okay. We've been talking for about like an hour. Looking at the camera over here. One hour? Yeah, for about an hour. Okay, that's fine. You want, uh, you want, you want to end it? You can end it if you want. That's fine. So I'm, I, I, I think I'm going to get ready for dinner. It's up to you. Anyways, I think my mom, I but I don't know what moment I'm going to come home. I, I might come home at 5 or 5.30. I don't know. You can end it if you want, or you can talk more about it. It's up to you. <sighs> I think I'll end the live stream and the video recording, and then we can still talk. Is that fine? That's fine. Alright, so, uh, thank you, uh, William Edward Hackman, for doing this live stream with me. And yeah. I'll put you on the documentary. This interview will be used for the documentary. So, thanks, William. We can still talk, though. Okay.